I want to go to London today, I don't need to fly to London. I can create a meta type of environment and be in London. And depending upon those people who can, who help, because it's not just, just going to be passive experience, it's going to be interactive experience. So I need to still talk to somebody, a guard, which is standing outside the Buckingham Palace in London. So that means they make commerce with me. And, you know, instead of I buying physical ticket, I buy a virtual ticket. And I actually do the same kind of experience, talk to a real, realish human being. That's another example of creating experience. Could you also uh, sort of paint a picture for our uh, viewers on what a Web 3.0 world will look like in the future? We live in digital world rather than interacting with digital world, which means that the way I today own real estate in physical world, I will own a real estate in digital world. See, when you make money, what do you do? Uh, if you are uh, super rich, uh, it's only as many number of uh, trips to the moon you can make, right? You know, so you rest of your money, you invest and you want to make that money, make more money. And how do you invest? There's a finite land, there's finite gold, there's finite other resources. So this is actually creating a new avenue for us to create new avenues for people to create and multiply wealth. So the way people used to do, let's take the example of art. So you went and bought an art from a very famous artist and you sold it to somebody for more and that person sold it to somebody for more. The art still is the same. Nothing has changed in the physical form of that art. Its value keeps going over time. So that's how in the Web 3.0 world, uh, assets which live in the digital world will change value over time depending upon how many people like those. If, if I had the ability to kind of take a voice note or if I had the ability to take, let's say, the, the image note of, of a celebrity, and sell them for next 20, 30, 40 years. So that's one example of creating wealth and commerce out of Web 3.0. Second example is living and experiencing, which is, you know, so today when, when we do, let's say tourism, right? Uh, we, we try and go to a place and if you can't be, before we go, you can go and watch a YouTube video of those kind of things. Now in the Web 3.0, you could actually be immersing yourself. So what you could do is that you could, for example, let's say if I want to go to London today, I don't need to fly to London. I can create a meta type of environment and be in London and depending upon those people who can, who help, because it's not just, just going to be passive experience, going to be interactive experience. So I need to still talk to somebody, a guard, which is standing outside the Buckingham Palace in London. So that means they make commerce with me. And, you know, instead of I buying physical ticket, I buy a virtual ticket. And I actually do the same kind of experience, talk to a real, realish human being. That's another example of creating experience. The third example of uh, living in, in the uh, Web 3.0 world could be, you know, trying and uh, dealing with things which I normally would do through an intermediary and I don't need to do, for example, I said, Payment could be one option there. Again, uh, buying or selling property and having your own house and, you know, those kind of things are going to be, you know, potentially the good use cases of uh, Web 3.0. Right now, we are struggling with Web 2.0, where governments globally are trying to regulate big tech uh, and their monopolies all over and uh, governments are figuring out a way to uh, regulate that. But when Web 3.0 comes into being, then what happens uh, in that case? I think regulations will evolve to deal with a technology like this. Uh, I've always seen that it's not that uh, we first build regulation and then bring technology. It's like saying, uh, if you were to wait for the roads to be built, we would have never invented car. So we first bring cars and then the roads come up. So I think in this kind of situation also, the regulation will come fast following and they will, they will evolve. Currently, uh, most countries don't have a very evolved regulatory framework to deal with peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but a lot of speed is happening in this space. So I think by the time it becomes mainstream, we will have regulations to deal with them. Uh, it's not an easy topic, but it's not an impossible. So I'm hopeful that regulation will catch up with something like this. So like you said that there are lots and lots of opportunities for the Indian IT industry and especially the, in, uh, the tech talent which is coming out of the country. But what kind of skills do they uh, really need to have to be a part of this uh, revolution or evolution? Once again, it's not just blockchain. Blockchain will be one of the ingredients, but also all the other kinds of technologies which make the, the experience happen to live in a truly digital uh, 3.0 kind of world. And uh, yes, uh, there are some general purpose technologies like uh, I remember when I was in college, I learned uh, C. It's still uh, prominent in many of those even blockchain applications. Of course, Java is uh, very popular. Python is another one which is used to build many blockchain applications. 
outside of that there are other specialized languages like uh, you know rust or ruby or some of that which again uh, we have a very large population of developers in india which deal with these technologies thanks for uh, painting such an interesting picture of web uh, 3.0 like you said there are finite in, uh, opportunities right now to invest and web 3.0 means infinite opportunities and uh, p- possibly a lot more options for creativity as well as investment thank you so much for joining us uh, today mr teja uh, it was a pleasure talking to you